What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're checking out a preview version of one of the best architectural modeling tools for Blender, Home Builder. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So Andrew Peel, who's the author of Home Builder, put out a video a few days ago now um, talking about some of the new features that he's adding to Home Builder 4. So as of right now, note that this is still currently in development, but we can download it and try it out, which is super exciting. So um, to find that, you can just go to his website, which I'll link to in the notes down below. And if you want to download it and give it a try, you can go into the documentation settings. So when you pop that up, you can go to the documentation page and there's an option under getting started to download Home Builder. And you can use this in order to download it and bring it in. But there's a number of interesting features that he's currently working on that I wanted to talk about. Um, mostly, I just wanted to generate interest because he's doing a great job and I want to make sure people know about the work that he's doing, especially as someone who's really into architectural style modeling. So first off, what you're going to do is you're going to download the zip file. And depending on what version of Blender you're using, you're going to pick one of these. Um, you should be using Blender 4.0, but you can just download that right here. But then if you jump into Blender, you want to go into your preferences, add-ons, and you want to make sure you install that zip file. When you do that, it's going to pop up a little window right here that says Asset Library Home Builder 4 and you want to make sure that that's enabled. Um, you can also check to make sure that you have the most up-to-date version. Um, if you downloaded it off his website, you probably do. But if you've had this for a while, you can click on the button to check for a new version and it's going to do that, which is actually a really nice feature. But let's take a look at some of the stuff that he's currently working on. So if you tap the in letter key on your keyboard to pop out this window. Notice how there's going to be a home builder window right here. And what you can do is you can jump into top down view and you can draw a wall. And so for example, say that I was to pick this point right here. Notice how I can move my mouse to draw or, and by the way, this is making use of that new blender feature that allows you to like orbit around um, while you're working, which is fantastic by the way. But so say this wall was gonna be 10 feet long. I'm gonna type in 120 inches, hit the enter key and we'll just keep doing that. We'll do something very simple. So I'm gonna move this across and I'm going to snap to this point right here. And then when I'm done, I'm just going to right click in order to close out of this. Note there is an option to tap C in order to close the room, but I wanna leave it open. And so what that does is that generates walls in here. And so the cool thing about this is you can collect those walls. And then what I can do is I can collect those walls by clicking on current room and with those walls, I can click on the option to add a floor. And so the cool thing about this tool is you can right click on any of these objects and go back to the prompts and you can adjust things like the length. So notice how if I make this longer, for example, um, the other walls that are associated with it are going to adjust as well, which is super cool. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and click on okay. So you can adjust the prompts of those objects, but you can also add things in here. And this is where this gets a little bit interesting because what he's done, let's jump over into our products and go to doors and windows. Say that I was to add a door in here. So I'm just gonna click and drag. Well, notice what this has now, um, if I kind of pan up a little bit, is this actually has dimensions that are updating on the top of the wall. So notice how I can set how far off of this wall this is going to be by moving my mouse and clicking or by typing in a value. So if I type in 36 inches, hit the enter key, that's gonna place that on this wall just like this. And so if I right click on this, I can adjust those prompts. These are all things that have already been in here, but they're still pretty cool. And I can adjust things like the height of the door. This is all being generated procedurally, giving you the ability to adjust these things. And so one of the things that I'm most excited about is the work that he's doing on letting you create like a two dimensional view. It's like a top down view that you could print or export to PDF. And so you can go into your, I think it's yeah, view settings. And this has added an option for layout views. Well, notice what this does is this gives you the ability to add a 2D plan view. And so when you do that, notice what this is going to do is this is actually going to create a camera 
view in a 2D layout. And so if I hit the zero key, I can kind of jump out and you can see what this is doing. This is automatically creating a camera view and note that it's kind of set up where it's intersecting with your door so that you get that kind of like cut through view. This is actually very similar to the way that you use section planes in SketchUp to do this same thing. But if I hit the zero key and then I'm just going to scroll back just a tad so that you can see this, this also generates a sheet in the background. So that sheet has kind of a title block and also a space for a name. Well, those are just text items. So for example, if I wanted to, I could type my name in here, tab out of edit mode, do the same thing with the title block and I could call this like floor plan view, like this. But what this has done is this has created this view that not only shows you your walls, but it also gives you the ability to adjust things like your dimensions. And so what's really cool about this is if you pick one of these dimensions right here, notice how these dimensions are being generated by geometry nodes. Well, because they're generated by geometry nodes, you can adjust things like the height of the text like this. And so I can use this to adjust the text of those nodes, as well as things like the height of the arrows that are created, the length of the leader, which is going to set how far off of this object this goes, like this. So um, super cool from that standpoint. This is pretty adjustable. All right, and so you can also adjust things like the page size and the drawing scale. So what that does is that kind of adjusts the camera field of view in here. Now, I'm not sure how these scale items actually correspond with like real world scales. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how that would work. Like if I was trying to quantify this, what I would probably do is just set my scale based on these dimensions. Um, but you do have the ability to kind of adjust the scale of that drawing in here by using this slider. And then when you're done, and I'm gonna go ahead and set a white background and uncheck the box for transparent background. If I click on the option for render, this is gonna render this out and it's going to show you the image that it creates in here. Obviously very rudimentary compared to something like Revit or something like that, but still this gives us the ability to create documents and plans that you can take out of Blender and actually print out. And so one additional thing that's in here is if you see these buttons for elevation dimensions, notice what I can do is I can actually mouse over things in this scene in order to create actual dimensions in here. And you can probably see it better in shaded mode, but like for example, I can add a dimension that shows the width of my wall. I can add a dimension that shows the width of my door, other things like that. And then when I jump in that camera view, right here, but then now that I've got these in here, if I render this out, note that you can adjust the lines um, that are rendering as well. But if I render this out, notice how I can get an elevation view that's also going to show me these dimensions in here. And so he's got some items built in here, but he's gonna be adding some additional things. Um, there's actually some super cool things in here for like building out cabinet or um, building out like closets. So for example, if I was to click in here, I'm gonna add this object like this, notice how I can use this in order to generate a closet that actually fills this in right here. Now these are adjustable, meaning I can right click and I can adjust things about like the width of the opening. So if I didn't want this to go all the way across here, I could adjust that. But he's also showed off some really cool stuff that I think is gonna be in his pro version for doing things like closet design and adding different panels in here, um, or at least like different closet rods and things like that. So super cool stuff that he's working on from that standpoint. I am very excited to see where this is going to go because this is probably um, one of the best, if not the best architectural modeling implement implementations I've seen for Blender so far. All right, and so he's also got some really interesting things going on with geometry nodes and giving you the ability to make things adjustable. So again, just like super exciting developments right now going on with Home Builder. So I definitely recommend you go watch this video, but also check it out on his website. You can download that preview version and give it a try in Blender 4.0. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this tool. Um, is it something that you might use? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.